Greetings all. Welcome. Last Outrider here with part five of the Underworld War. He started at the corpse's voice, but Jarvash stood unmoving, unliving, slouched against the wall and pinned by spears lancing through his body. The alkaline wind rattled against the dead man's armor with little skitterings of blown grit. Jarvash, Karutal said. He knew no fear. There was no unease in his voice. No. None. None at all. A demon living in your blood could not change that about you. Surely. He ran his ridged bone spurs in a threatening, scraping caress down the skull's side. Jarvash, he said again. Nothing. Just another ghost of Kalf. Jarvash's skinless head tilted and toppled, smashing on the rotcrete ground. If it was an omen, Karutal could not imagine what it was supposed to portend. Things could hardly get much worse for the word-bearers on this accursed world. Never before had overwhelming, lightning victory and drawn-out, grinding defeat colluded so closely. Power armor thrummed louder nearby. A shadow danced at the edge of his vision. He turned again feeling his fingers harden, lengthen, the skin retracting around the curved claws, where a human's reaction to unease was seen in an elevated heart rate and the onset of sphere sweat. Karutal's body reacted by forging weapons from his flesh, shifting him into the divine murderousness of his killing form. Bones creaked and stretched, flesh ripped and reformed. It was not agony, but nor was it painless. He stared down the deserted avenue, his senses bladed and beast-keen. The bodies lay as they had lain before, and the buildings still stood as silent, kilometer-high tombstones driven into the dirt. Karutal came the voice from inside. The suddenness of it peeled the lips back from his teeth, and for the first time in months, he felt a stirring from the demon within. A sluggish sensation, like something turgid in the silt at the bottom of a lake. His blood thickened with it, and the bony protrusions spiking out from his armor gave sympathetic aches. He could feel the presence within, questing with its senses, stretching tendrils of consciousness and withdrawing them in a lazy recoiling. We are no longer within the caverns. It was not exactly speech. The demon's thoughts coalesced in Karotal's skull only slightly more slowly than his own inner monologue. A conversation with the creature inside was as simple and subtle as the seamless transference of ideas and concepts at the merest whim. You have slumbered, Karatal pulsed back, for over three months, this is the surface. My wounds 
forced the silence of slumber. Was there the blade's edge of defensiveness in the demon's thoughts? Karotao was quite sure there was. The blue warp weaver. Is he dead? He recalled the battle. Some agonies wormed their way into the mind, as unshakable as a splinter beneath a nail. And witch lightning, tearing at your very soul, was one of them. The pain had been extraordinary. He dimly remembered laughing, learning, even, as merciful gray mists threaded into the down into his consciousness. Even as his blood boiled in his veins and his second soul had fallen into untouchable darkness. The librarian is dead, Karotal sent back. Three months in his grave, dead by my hand, I have left the underworld war behind. I hunger. There is no blood on the surface. The demon stretched itself through Karotal's body, filling his bones all the way to his toes and fingertips. Muscle twitches made his fingers flicker, and his left eyelid started to spasm. But I hunger, the demon said again. Karotal's teeth clacked together as sentient pain oozed through the bones of his jaw. I hunger, the demon said again, this time with the word bearer's mouth. Kautau repressed a shudder, then repressed the symbiote itself. It took focus, but concentration shackled the demon from making any claim over his physical form. Calculus equations always worked best for Karotal. Some of the Gal Vorbeck prayed, or simply gave in to their skin-riding demons, letting the Neverborn claim them at will. But Karotal had always suppressed his sacred parasite with the repetition of long, involved calculations. Reciting and solving them occupied his mind, keeping his thoughts free of the creature's passions. Our wings hurt, Jerodai. They atrophied. We were in the dark too long. I hunger. Enough! We have a duty up here. The demon slithered through his veins. He felt it coiling tight around his spine, just as he felt it licking at the filament nerves behind his eyelids. What duty? Karutal turned from the headless corpse of his fallen brother, moving away through the urban detrius. A duty to make the Legion remember us. I am gathering relics from each chapter that I... The demon's displeasure came as a jolt of pain in the looping cables of Karutal's bowels. Legions? And pride? And memories and brotherhood? These are man concerns, man duties. Let us hunt, feed, and no. His interruption was as smooth as the demons had been, and just as forceful. Karutal's mouth was a mangled mess of ceramite and ivory teeth. He spat blood onto the road. No, this matters to me. 
slits gashed open in the side of his arm. Four new eyes, each one yellowishly reptilian, opened and regarded the dead city. They rolled in their ceramite muscle sockets, then closed and sealed over. Karuta felt others opening on his shoulder blades, and another by his knee. They also rolled and stared before sealing and closed in viscous, moist whispers. Something moved under his ribcage. Something else moved in his guts. He sensed the demon's disgust. <sighs> you are hollowed through by cancers. They hang inside you, these black fruits, staining your body with sickness. You would die without me, Jerudai. This pilgrimage on the surface will see you dead. The sun is poison, he sent back. <sighs> I can see that better than you, host. The demon did something inside his chest. There was the grainy, fluid feeling of black juice flowing across his insides. I can pulp these black fruits, rip them from their cradles of flesh and bone, and dissolve them into your bloodstream. But there will be pain. There is always pain. Hmm. Silence now. Let me save us from this foolishness of man-pride. Karotal took three steps before his swimming vision drove him to his knees. His legion-granted sensory organs had compensated for any dizziness since their implantation back in his dimly recalled childhood. So disorientation was as unfamiliar as it was unwelcome. Yet he thudded down onto his hands and knees, dizzy as a drunkard, while something serpentine slipped between his eyes and started gnawing at the meat of his mind. Your brain is ripe with corruption. It is a wonder you aren't blind. Karutal felt his fangs clench together, cutting the street silence with a porcelain squeal. One of his claws broke against the rockcrete, but the aborted talon lengthened fresh from the bleeding finger once more. To his left, half a meter from his clawed hand, a dead word-bearer regarded him with eye lenses the color of fresh frost. Brother! He greeted the corpse, feeling the sick urge to laugh. Its armor was too bolter-blasted to offer any hint of identity. All that mattered were the god ruins carved into the ceramite. That much, at least, Karutal would remember and bring back to the Legion. He had Jarvish's knife as evidence. The dead warrior regarded him with its ice-pale eye lenses. Karutal, it said. Its voice was the alkaline wind itself, formed of whispers and a clatter of dust against armor. You have abandoned us. And 
And then next time we will continue on with part six of the Underworld War. Until then, bye.